We are back at it another day live. You already know. You already know. Let me tell you something. We will prophesy to the wind. Okay? We gonna get this truth out here on these airwaves. Okay? And we have a discussion that we're gonna do today. And it's really untitled. It really is untitled. Y'all chill out. Okay? We're going to be talking about truth. We're going to be talking about telling the truth, being honest, not lying. Okay? Now, I want someone to read the definition of verbatim. What does verbatim mean? In exactly the same words as were used originally, subjects were instructed to recall the passage verbatim. So that means exactly. Exactly. Way to go. We want scripture that is coming from the Bible verbatim. When we ask if you can show us a scripture where God Almighty is saying God is going to send Jesus to die for your sins, we want that verbatim. Why? Because Paul is speaking verbatim. He is saying Jesus Christ or Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. So we want to know what scriptures is you talking about. We want it verbatim. And a lot of people... A lot of Christians don't know what the word verbatim mean. They say word for word, but for some reason, it just don't click. All right, so we're going to talk about a noun named salvation. Now, salvation is called an unaccountable noun, okay? It's an unaccountable noun. Now, now there's the root word, Yeshua, in some of the places where salvation is mentioned. All the time salvation is mentioned in the Hebrew, and I'm talking about in the Old Testament, it is not necessarily saying Yeshua. Now, I had a guy tell me today that in Isaiah 49, he was talking about that word salvation actually means Yeshua and it actually means Jesus. But it don't say Jesus. You're looking at that word salvation salvation, and you're getting Yeshua out of it. All right. And that is not exact. OK. Keep in mind when Jesus was on earth, he said, go not into the way of the Gentiles. He said that he was sent only to who, y'all? Y'all tell me, who was he sent to? The lost sheep, the sheep of, of Israel. Israel. Say it louder for people to hear, y'all. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. To the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is when Jesus came. He said he was only sent to the lost sheep. That's it. All right. He called the Greek woman a doll. And he said he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So if you was to go into Isaiah 49, it's talking about someone being a light to the Gentiles and also raising up the tribes of Israel. And Christians and Israelite camp cult leaders, they believe that is speaking of Jesus. And I disagree because when Jesus was here on earth, he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And if you go to Genesis 49, 10, it is speaking of a messenger specifically to the Gentiles, just like Isaiah 49 is and also Isaiah chapter 60. This is also seen in Isaiah 42 1. I believe this is speaking of the Gentile 
messenger. So when people try to just look inside of a person's uh, name and try to find things and all that, when it's not verbatim, it's not verbatim. Jesus is not mentioned by name, by the name Jesus in the entirety of of the old testament we have nothing verbatim all right so also i'll tell you another thing the word salvation is an uncountable uncountable noun but jesus is a proper noun just like you and me we are called proper nouns those are two different Okay, you can't take every time you see salvation in the Bible and think it's talking about Jesus because sometimes the root word isn't Yeshua. It's another root word. Also, sometimes when you look at the word deliverer, I just learned today that deliverer actually is going into Moshe, where the name Moses comes from. Remember, Moses was called Moses because he was drawn out of the water. He was rescued out of the water. And I learned that today and I was just like, wow, that is that is very, very amazing. Now, I'm going to get the other root word so you can know what is the other root word for salvation in the Bible. And the first time salvation is mentioned is in Genesis 49, verse 18. All right. And that translation, it is Yeshua. I'm going to find one in here. I'm going to find one in here because I was looking at this earlier. All right. And... In Lamentations 3.26, this word salvation actually means Teshua, Teshua, and it actually means rescue, okay, coming from that same root word, Yeshua, all right, but it's not Yeshua this time. It's Teshua. So you're going to get yourself in a rabbit hole if you just really just try to look at every time salvation is mentioned and automatically assume it's talking about Jesus. If God wanted to say Jesus, he would just say Jesus. All right. And we know, according to the Bible, and I believe this is going to be in First Kings chapter 13 verse 2 because a guy by the name of John poor John he was saying that prophecy don't work that way and um, you want something verbatim he said well prophecy don't work that way okay but I'm going to show you a scripture where prophecy actually mentions a person's name okay and this is going to be in 1 Kings 13 2 and he cried again And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, oh, altar, altar, thus saith the Lord. See, I get excited when I hear that. Christians, they have no respect for thus saith the Lord. Okay, but I get excited when I hear thus saith the Lord because I know it's God almighty speaking. And it says, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, okay? And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. So I'm paraphrasing. He was saying there's a boy by the name of Josiah that's going to be born, and he's going to barbecue preachers. He is going to barbecue preachers. Now, notice the prophet mentioned the person's name. So why wasn't Jesus' name mentioned in Isaiah 53 or Isaiah 49? Because it was a dark sentence. It wasn't put out there for you to know exactly. Okay, so prophecy can tell you a person's name if it wants you to know. All right, so you can't 
be just looking at scriptures and automatically assuming when you're doing that you're making the prophet muhammad peace be upon him right because he said the christian has nothing but assumption nothing but conjecture all right so we just established the fact okay that salvation is one thing and mentioning a person's name is one thing. Now I want to keep going. I want to keep going. Now I gave everybody a project. And I want each and every last one of you to give me a scripture that is talking about not lying. Okay, let's get a scripture. Who's going to do it first? Let's go in a circle. That would be better. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 28. Be nigh witness against thy neighbor without cause, and deceive not with thy lips. All right. So, that is okay. That is okay. That's going into not lying. Um, a lot of people, some people would want something more exact. Okay, but that is going into being a truthful Witness, so I would receive that. Let's keep going. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 19, verse 16. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is. Sorry. Then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord. All right, so that is going into a false witness, okay? Now let's keep going. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 9. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speaks lies shall perish. A false witness will be punished. That's what the Most High is saying, okay? Let's keep going. Let's go. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. All right, that's the one I was going to pull. Now, notice it uses the word bear. <laughs> and think about it. Christians think Jesus bear or bore their sins. They truly believe God bore their sins, and they are scrambling through the Bible. And they can't find nothing coming from God Almighty, God All-Powerful, saying that he's going to send someone named Jesus to die for their sins or to bear their sins. And the Bible says, do not bear false witness. Do not lie. Do not lie. Okay, and I'm going to read. Exodus 23 and 1, thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Okay, you need to have scripture validating what you say. You can't be looking at no scriptures assuming. Okay, you can't be bearing false witness. And when a person tries to bring me one scripture, like your boy John, he tried to bring me one scripture in Isaiah 53 talking about um, he interpreted it. At, he he understood it as Jesus interceding for us. I said, well, show me another scripture. Show me another prophet saying that. What's wrong with me wanting to know if any of the other prophets said that? You can't take one scripture, okay, and, and really build a mountain on it. That's what I call an island scripture. You need to have prophets in agreement. Prophets in agreement. Just like Moses said, do not commit adultery. Okay? Then we have the prophet said, do not commit adultery. Then we had Jesus say, commit not adultery. Then your boy Paul said, do not commit adultery. That's very clear. That's very clear. That's in the mouth of two or three witnesses. But when you take one scripture out there by itself, and then you build a mountain on it, you are destined 
to be in error. Like the Israelite camps. They love taking that 144,000. Boy, they love that 144,000. And you know what's so sad about the 144,000? It's only in the book of Revelation. There's no other mention of 144,000. Now, if you believe that, okay, you know, keep that to the side. But why would you build a mountain on it? Okay, you don't have no other references. Okay, and let me tell you something. The, the author of John wasn't on the mountaintop like Moses was getting instructions from the most high. God didn't write the book of Revelation with his own finger. OK, so if you believe that, that's cool. But how are you going to be building a mountain on that? You ain't got no other reference on that. None. Zero. OK, so it's very important whenever you are bringing out a scripture to have a scripture reference. That's what they did in the New Testament, because there was no prophetic utterance. And when I say prophetic utterance, there is not one mention of thus saith the Lord in the entire New Testament. The last messenger we had was Malachi. And guess what, y'all? Malachi, his name means messenger of God. Wow. So the last person that said, thus saith the Lord, his name means messenger of God. Wow. That's true. Because thus saith the Lord is not mentioned in the entire New Testament. The Gospels were all written by men. Okay. And Paul, he brings out the fact that men wrote as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. But Paul put his signature on most of his letters. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John don't have a signature. Okay. Peter don't have a signature. OK. They don't have signatures. You don't know who wrote them. All right. But you putting all your faith in it. So it's good for things to be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And I'm going to get that scripture. I'm going to get that scripture for you. This is going to be Deuteronomy 17 verse 6. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses. Shall he that is worthy of death be put to death, but at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. So one person can come up to the altar and say, I want him to die. I want him to die. He did this. He did that. Well, who else said that? Nobody, but he did this. He did that. Well, get away from here. You don't have another person siding with you. And that's exactly how y'all sound when y'all pulling Isaiah 53 and y'all at the altar with just one scripture, one scripture, one scripture, nothing coming from Moses, nothing coming from Abraham. You got one scripture. Do you really think that's going to be heard, especially the prophet of Isaiah? The book of Isaiah was Isaiah and he was told to go and misguide people. He was told to make the ears of the people heavy, to make the hearts of the people fat. He was instructed to mislead the people. We have Christians online saying this right now. Fellow Christians who believe that Isaiah was different from all the other prophets, that he was the prophet that was sent to do the opposite. He was sent to mislead, and I thoroughly believe with all my heart that Jesus, prophet Isa, okay, same name as Isaiah, okay, salvation, and uh, Isaiah's name means salvation of the Lord. He was sent to be God's Isaiah. He was sent as a stumbling stone to Israel, and you have stumbled. You have stumbled and God will use Jesus as a witness against you because the Jews and the Christians believe in Jesus before his death, as the Quran says, and Jesus will be a witness against them. All right. So that is Deuteronomy 17 verse six. Now we have Deuteronomy 19 and 15. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in any sin that he sinneth. Now, I'm going to read that again. 
One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in any sin that he sent up at the mouth of two or three. Dang, God said two or three. All right. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Not not only just two. Sometimes situations are so difficult, a third witness needs to come in. And these Christians are scrambling to find one scripture of God Almighty saying Jesus is going to die for your sins. They can't even find two, let alone three. They don't have nothing coming from God. Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 3 that Christ died according to the scriptures for your sins and that he was buried according to the scriptures for your sins. What scriptures? What scriptures? Okay. That's what you need to be asking yourself. All right. That's a red flag, especially when thus saith the Lord is not mentioned at all in the entire New Testament. Now, I want to keep going. Okay. And I want to bring out some verbatim text. Okay. Now, here we have the Samaveda. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's the Samaveda is the Veda of Melodies and Chants. It is an ancient Vedic Sanskrit text and is one of the sacred scriptures in Hinduism. One of the four Vedas, okay? So this right here is scripture coming from the Hindu text, all right? And look what it says. It says, God will send him. His name will be Mohammed, okay? And it says, the pride of mankind, the dweller in Arabia, okay? Another, in Saveda, book 2, hymn 6, verse 8, it reads, Ahmed, and we know that Ahmed is short for Mohammed, acquired re religious law from his Lord. This law of religion is full of wisdom so here the prophet peace be upon him is spoken of ver word for word verbatim in their scriptures okay now i have another one this is going to be song of solomon chapter 5 verse 16 this is for the muhammad haters it says in verse 16 his mouth is most sweet yea he is altogether lovely this is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Now, if you was to read this in the actual Hebrew text, the name lovely was translated from the name Mohammed. Now, you can look that up right now on Bible Hub. All you got to do is go to Google, type in Song of Solomon 516, go to Bible Hub, and then type on Hebrew, and it will show you in the Hebrew book, the Hebrew Bible, that the name Lovely was translated from the name Mohammed, okay? The translators were notorious for doing this. They always translated people's names. For instance, Jesus' name ain't Jesus. That's not his name, okay? His name is Yeshua, all right? In Arabic, his name is Isa. And they are notorious for translating people's name. For instance, God's name ain't God, backwards for dog. That's not his name. If you read the scriptures, his name is Eli. His name is Elohim. His name is Jehovah. All right. But they translate it to God, which is a German name for God. And God can mean anything. OK, the difference how we know is God is if it's capital G. But what if you start off the sentence with God? How do you know that's talking about God or a human God or any gods? It's not specific because they translate people's names. So I'm going to read it translating the original name. This is Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. His mouth is sweet, yea, 
Mohammed. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. This is in your Bible. This is in your Bible. I'm not making it up. I'm not adding. I'm not looking and, and trying to take one word and make it something. No, it's in there. It's in the book. Not only that, it's mentioned in the Old Testament. Jesus' name ain't even mentioned in the Old Testament. Okay, so you got to consider when I'm putting the truth out there, okay? I wanted to show you all this because we have a lot of people that they want to debate. But they don't know how to follow instructions, okay? So if I'm asking you to give me a scripture, word for word, and I'm going to ask one of y'all, is there a scripture in the entirety of the Bible? I'm putting the New Testament on the table. Speaking of the 66 books, is there a scripture, word for word, verbatim, that God says, and it goes like, Thus saith the Lord, I'm going to send Jesus or the Messiah, and he is going to die for your sins. Can somebody answer me? No. No. It's not in there. It is not. And the problem with Christians is they are lying. That's why I had every last one of y'all quote a scripture against lying. Lying is lying. And God is against lying. He's against it, okay? You shouldn't bear false witness, okay? So if you don't have a scripture, you don't have one. It's not the end of the world, okay? You are being justified by telling the truth, you know, and then speak your mind. Well, it's not in there word for word verbatim, but I believe this and I believe this. And if I was to say, well, to be honest, you really, really don't have no ground to stand on coming from God Almighty, do you? No, I don't. I don't. It's just, you know, I got this thing for Jesus and, you know, Jesus loves you. And, you know, even though I don't say it, I just my heart gets mushy when I hear Jesus. And I believe in Jesus, brother. I believe in Jesus, even though God don't even say it. OK, and it's the same thing when we say, is there a scripture in the entirety of the Bible? I want somebody to answer me. Is there a, a scripture in the entirety of the Bible? One single ambiguous statement where Jesus says, you know what? I am God. Worship me. Is that in the book? No, it's not in there. It's not in there. You reading before Abraham was I am and all that stuff. That stuff right there is meant to stumble you. It is meant to make you stumble. It is meant to mislead you because it is not direct. And think about it. If the Bible calls Jesus your brother in the book of Hebrews and his mother was Mary, do you really think God has a mom? No. Mm -mm. Do y'all really think God has a brother? No, no, he's far above all of that. He's far above having sons. He's far above having mothers. He's far above having brothers. OK, there is none like him. OK, I encourage you to worship God for who he is. There is nothing like him. He is the creator. OK, he is in a class all by himself. Elkanah had it right when he told his wife, he said to his wife, Hannah, he said, am I not better to you than 10 sons? I'm telling you something. That man was in the spirit for real. All right. So now we are done. Now it's time for us to get in these scripts like we always do. And I know y'all with it. Is y'all with it? Yes. yes. All right. Peace.